Hi, I am Tanisha Jackson Warner. I'm here in Washington, D.C. at CBC, and I'm happy to shout out the book look. Thank you so much for covering our panel. Uh, the title of the panel was You Should Write a Book. I'm here today being featured for my book, Profit with Purpose, A Marketer's Guide to Delivering Purpose-Driven Campaigns to Multicultural Audiences. So what is this book about and why should you read it? Well, basically, I've taken the past 10 years of case studies of working with Fortune 100 brands and really helping them craft marketing campaigns to reach multicultural audiences that were all grounded in their brand's purpose. So basically, really starting with this formula of, okay, why do you exist? That's really where we start with all of our brands. And how do we map that to sales, return on investments, and reaching consumers in meaningful ways. And so who is this book for? It's for CEOs, it's for chief marketing officers, it's for marketing executives, but Beyond that, it's for any individual that's looking to understand how do I take my purpose in life and map it to my profession? How do I take my purpose in life and turn it into a business venture that's actually profitable? So if that's you, definitely check my book out, Profit With Purpose, and I thank you in advance. You Wait, Tori, let me have my book moment, doing? okay? Let me have what my book doing? moment. What's your but book about? <laughs> tell them what's your book about. I just told him. Really? And for all of you that didn't, did not get a chance to What's see Torre. I want you to all. The purpose. Yes. Oh, you How know. You listen. You listen. Okay. Let's. Okay. We what is your Jackson purpose? Why? Why do you exist? <laughs> why, why do you exist? Let's. <laughs> because my mama loved my daddy. <laughs> 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 loved my no. It. It gotta be deeper than that. It's. It's deeper than that. your mama love your daddy. Now I'm here to support my kids. How much deeper can it be? You support your kids and what else? Dude. Look at this stuff that you're giving to the world. What's your passions? What's my passion? Yeah. Running my mouth. <laughs> okay, so do you all understand how Torre has taken his passion What's of running real? his mouth? What's going What's on? What's real? In the world? Hey, keep it and his real. point of view. Let's keep it real. And what you say he has figured out a model. <laughs> to profit with this purpose of just talking. That's right. See, you they you get it. Shoes. Okay, and you can also shout out my shoes too, okay? And you could walk in them. Wow. <laughs> All right, so come on. When I saw the shoes on the, on the cover, I said, can you walk in those shoes? And she's like, yes, I can. And I saw she's shoes that she's wearing. Like, she can walk in them. Wow. All right, now come on. We got to talk about your book, too. It's like six inches, right? Yes. Wow. So you're a shorty when you're not in those shoes, aren't oh, you? Oh, I am. I am. But you will never see that height. You will never see that height. All right, so come on, tell me about your book. You what see, you like the way I'm doing this interview, right? Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to know? This is an audience. This is the African American network that showcases authors. It's okay. one of the only book shows dedicated to African American authors. All right, all so right. let's talk. You know, I wanted to write a book about Prince and explore who he really is and what he's really all about and why he was mm -hmm. so important to those of us who loved him when we were coming up, when we were Generation X. We're still our Generation X, but he connected to our lives in a very deep way you know mm -hmm. and and he was right on the things that we cared about and that we were talking about when divorce was really huge in america not just in the black community but in america here was somebody who come from a divorced home when latchkey children were all over the place here was somebody who had been a latchkey child so he could understand our experience we could understand his we could communicate with him and in the mid to late 80s, when sexuality was at a whole other level, right? And, yeah. and you had, you know, things like Princess Leia in a gold bikini, right? With a <laughs> chain, right? She was a slave, right? Right, s &M, in your face in a mainstream Star Wars movie, right? So that's the level of sexuality in America at that point, right? Because everybody had VCR, so everybody could watch porno on their own. And here comes Prince, talking about Purple Rain, mm -hmm. you know, talking about Kiss, you know, talking about Raspberry Beret, with these incredible story songs. But the thing that a lot of people don't get, a lot of men get on the mic, and want to sing about sex, they want to talk about how they're going to dominate you, right? How they're going to be the man and they're going to overcome mm -hmm. you. Prince was never about that. In all his story songs, you are coming on to him. You are dominating him, right? Think about Little Red Corvette. I she never drops thought about him, that. Right? In, in some of the other, in Raspberry Bray, she puts him on the back of her bike and they go down to Old Man Johnson's farm. Darling Nikki sees him and picks him up 
and she is more sexual than he is, right? The lady cab driver, she's driving him. So constantly these women are coming on to him and picking him up and he's trying to compete and be as sexual as they are, which I feel like makes a woman feel more welcome to be freaky and to be herself and to be sexual because Prince is like, not only do I want it, I'm trying to keep up with you. I'm impressed with how sexual you are and how do I get up to your level? So, you know what I mean? And, and wrapping spirituality within it, right? Because it wasn't like Saturday is here and Sunday morning is there, right? They're all in one. You think about a song like Adore, right? Oh, where, my favorite where, of all times. They're making love and the angels are watching and crying tears of joy down onto them. So God and the angels are like, we want this to happen. You don't have to feel guilty about sex and lust and God wants this to happen. It's part of the whole spiritual uh, impulse. All right. So you all heard it, right? I know if you're watching this, you love Prince. So make sure and check out my boy's wow, book. You're a good little interviewer. <laughs> Let me find out if you can wrap it with no um, prompter. See if you take it to break. Okay. Let me see. See, I'm not. This is what you do. See, this is see, you. You made me nervous. Okay. So once again, thank you for joining us at thebooklook.com. Your only African American. I got you. I got you. Your only African American show dedicated to African American authors right. and we are in Washington DC at uh, CBC right who are you talking to and I'm talking to Torre right now about his latest book that you need to go buy What's your name? I would die for you yes a, a story about Prince's life and I'm Tanisha Jackson Warner thanks for watching thanks for watching <laughs> <laughs>